zero. Mark the X. This is AM 970 WSTX. AM 970 WSTX. All right. All right, all right, all right. It is Thursday, the best day because it leads to the fantastic Friday. So good morning, St. Croix, St. Thomas, St. John, the rest of the Virgin Islands, the rest of the Caribbean, down under, over there in Europe up in the mainland USA, all the way up into Canada. Got family up there too and friends also. All right. Want to send a, a special shout out to my good friend Anna Lewis. Yeah, Anna Lewis, class of 1980. Yeah, that's your class. I ain't going to tell nobody my class. I ain't going to date myself tonight. But I uh, should say uh, a great shout out to you. Thanks for keeping me abreast and everything else. I know sometimes I'm hard to get in touch with, but hey, hang in there. Also want to send a, a, a shout out to uh, Shalita Schuster as she's entered into this 35 years of her music in motion thing and a journey that she is still on and doing a great service here in the Virgin Islands. All right. Now we're going to have some guests a little bit later on, but first thing, I'm doing a series called Art and the Artist. And this morning, I'm going to treat you to one of the interviews that I've done with regards to this program, Art and the Artist. And I've got Paul Youngblood is going to be in the house. Without further ado, let's get going and get him in here. All right. All right, we've got a little jazz here for the intro. And I'm going to ease myself out and let you enjoy Art and the Artist, a conversation with Paul Youngblood. Good day. My name is Doug Canton, and I have the pleasure today of bringing to you Mr. Paul Youngblood, or should I say the renowned, <laughs> world-renowned, <laughs> definitely Virgin Islands and Caribbean-renowned, Paul Youngblood, the artist. Thank you. And uh, we're here today to talk about you, your art, your contribution, and the things that have inspired you over the years. So I'd like to start off with you basically letting us know a little bit about you, how you grew up, and the things that influenced you. And the events in your life that took you deeper and deeper into art, so deep you can't get out of it. I think I was deep from a child, but uh, I actually was born in the States. My mother is a, a native Persian, so I'm really a native son. All right. But going to uh, school at an early age, mm -hmm. actually I sold my first painting when I was in second grade. Hey. And from that point on, I knew I wanted to be an artist. So I was encouraged by my teachers, encouraged by my parents, and um, I had this natural ability. So it really wasn't something that was hard for me, but uh, it was something I enjoyed doing. And at that age, I knew I could make money at it, so I just continued in that pursuit until today. Going through uh, high school, junior high, high school, it was always my goal to be an artist. Not an art teacher, but an artist. I just wanted to paint all my life. That's all I wanted to do was paint. So even though I went to college, my ultimate goal was just to paint. So uh, when I went to college, I was young. <laughs> I didn't realize, realize how important education was. But I knew I wanted to paint. And uh, from a college age on, that's when I started my career. We moved to the Virgin Islands when I was in high school, but I went for a short period of time to Florida A&M. But after that, uh, we moved back, I moved back to St. Croix and um, 
Being an artist, you have to realize uh, it's not the easiest profession to make a living at. So many times you have to get jobs. I work for Hess. Actually, my first job was with a blind printer in St. Croix. His name was uh, Joseph. He was uh, related to Judge Joseph. It was Square Deal Printing in Fredericksburg. And he was actually a blind printer. So he would feel the paper to make sure that the imprint, that's when they had the offset print, printing back then. So that was one of my jobs. I worked for Riggers and Erectors, which was a construction company. I worked for Hess, but all the time, I was doing my artwork, and then when working for Hess, I realized I didn't have enough time to really do my job as an artist. Because being an artist is a job. So I quit Hess and I opened my first studio back in the late 70s in Fredericksburg. And I called that studio the Unknown Artist Studio Gallery. So it was an area in Fredericksburg right on Strand Street, it was in Val's yard. So I opened that studio, and that was really the beginning of my career. Because at that point, um, I was the only artist in the studio, but I met other artists who wanted to come into the studio. Like artists like Jimmy Dunn, artists like Dove. All the artists in St. Croix eventually I got in contact with, and they wanted to be my studio. Even though I focused on my own artwork, I still gave everybody the opportunity. And me and a fellow photographer artist named Ron Cox, at that time, we were doing outdoor art shows in Christiansted. And uh, we gathered every two weeks, we gathered all the artists that we could. We did all the promotion, but we wanted uh, to show a venue of art in St. Croix, to let people know how many artists there were in St. Croix, and have a venue for the artists in St. Croix. So um, that kept growing and growing, and many artists started their career from doing those outdoor art shows. And um, first it started in, um, there's a yard, I don't know what it's called now, but there was a yard behind, uh, it was uh, right off of Company Street, but it was like a little courtyard there that went way back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a, at least 20, 30 artists in there. And my brother was on the island at the time. I would ask him to play music. He's a pianist, he's a jazz pianist, so he would come and play music. So we have music, we have art, and uh, it got pretty regular for a while. And a lot of artists sprung out of that. So after that, uh, I had different studios, mostly in Fredericksted, but I always uh, did uh, painting. When I first started out, I started out with a pencil drawing. But uh, everybody asked me, do you do anything in color? Do you do anything in color? And at that time, uh, I didn't know if I could paint or not. I knew I had the ability, a natural ability, so I started painting. And that came pretty natural, and now I don't do any drawing, all I do is painting. I do acrylics on uh, canvas. So it started out, I was doing um, a lot of uh, natural scenes. Because anywhere on St. Croix, I mean, you can go anywhere, anytime, any time of the day, any area in St. Croix, you can see something that you can paint. Think, yeah. It's endless inspiration here. Right. Okay. Now, I, I want to come back to something that you said. You said from the time you were two years old. You second grade. Second grade? Second grade? Yep. Second grade? Okay, I'm, I'm speeding you up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about two years old. <laughs> second grade. You knew you wanted to be an artist. And, and I say that uh, uh, in, in, in making that statement, is it something you saw or, or a particular experience? What? If you had to say there was a trigger, or was it just that you were always looking for a pencil and a paper and drawing stuff? How, how but the trigger happen? was, I drew a picture of my best friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, his father wanted to show me appreciation for that picture, and he bought it from me. Wow. So uh, even though he only bought it for a dollar, back in second grade, back when I was in second grade, a dollar bought a lot of candy. <laughs> and a dollar... It made me realize that I can make money off of this. And it's something that I have naturally, that I created. And then my teachers were, and my parents, they were all encouraging me from that time on to, uh, to pursue that, because they saw the abilities there. I mean, in second grade, you really don't know the potential, but they saw the potential. And they pushed me from that point on, and I was uh, 
Well, you better track down that friend of yours and take <laughs> that picture because that's, that's when you, you still have it. Oh, that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> that's a Paul Young one. That's one of the originals. Yes, that's <laughs> an original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's when it all started. That's when I always felt, and from that point on, I always wanted to be a professional artist. Okay. Okay. Well, I'd, I'd like to uh, segue into some of the art that you've done. And in the process, uh, I think what we need to do also is let folks know if they want to, to look at some of your art that they can find you both on the internet and on Facebook. Okay. Any other areas that you're on, those two, two primarily? Primary Facebook and, uh, and the, the internet, internet, both under Paul Youngblood Artists. Okay, so folks, remember Paul Youngblood Artists if you're going to a website, just add .com to that. If you're on Facebook, just keep the spaces in between. Paul Youngblood Artist. And, and, hit, and hit like. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. And you'll be updated with all my recent work and what I'm doing. And I'm going to start putting shots in my studio because, uh, you know, it's always good to see what an artist is doing in their studio. So I want to take a minute here and, and look at, at some of your work and we can uh, drive the discussion. And we're here at your Facebook page and we're looking at uh, the photos there. And I'm going to start here. Is this, this is your most recent collection that we're looking at here? Yeah, that's the uh, five pieces I have at the Top Hat Gallery. Okay. That'll be uh, on display until the first week in December of this year, 2015. All right. So actually, that's a painting I did there of uh, a gentleman named Sundial. I know you, you know who Sundial is. Yeah, <laughs> there might be a new generation. Sundial probably knew who I was before. <laughs> there, might, there might be a new generation that doesn't know Sundial, but in some of my paintings, I try to capture some of those memories that mm -hmm. are disappearing. Well, the, the, uh, not only that, but you have a sign here hanging down on this painting. Babaru. Right. And I remember Babaru. That was the place that uh, we, we had that was our local stationary place. Or Basically like Staples this. or office, yep. office Depot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that so, was before you could order things online. Yeah, and exactly. And Babaru was right there downtown. You needed it. You went downtown and you got it. And of course, times change. Things change. Places aren't there and they've been supplanted by uh, other businesses and organizations. But these are memories oh, that yeah. make the character of Christian Stead. And it's worth like when you see a painting like that, you're, like you said, you automatically, well, Sundown probably knew you before you were born. Mm -hmm. So you, re, you can relate to that painting. Yep, yep. Okay. And then I like the architecture of St. Croix. I mean, uh, the Danish architecture with all the arches. Once you see some arches, you know that's either, you know that's in the West Indies, and sometimes you can recognize the street immediately. Because when we're younger, even older, you know, used to run down them arches. And yeah. <laughs> run down, jump over. Right. The, the Weaving and out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. And um, it's, it's unique, and it's something that we have to... to it's part of culture. You know, and I, I'm looking at the detail in your painting here because I see the, uh, the sundial, I guess that's him there, but the tiles. Right. You know, the, the, the detail. The, the, and I, I, I watch these things, and I'm in awe because I, I would have all kind of mishmash up my <laughs> looking stuff if I was there trying to be an artist. Okay, so when I see that type of detail and how it comes out, that's really, really nice to... And one thing about art is also, you have a level of interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a long time ago, it doesn't have to look exactly like something. You just want to give the impression, the idea, the feeling. And like you see the tiles there. I mean, I didn't lay each tile out, but you just see the impression of them and you can relate. And, and because otherwise, to duplicate. Right. That's the case. Then you get a camera and take a right. picture. Right. Basically, it gets a little too uh, meticulous. To, right, uh, right. No, no, no. It's to give that feel. And right. When I look at that, I get the feeling that I'm there. Right. And it's real, and it's people, and it's traffic. That If you could just 
do a, a artwork every 60 seconds, you'll see all of this activity throughout out the day. I mean, if you could, if you could get a penny for every footstep that has been through <laughs> those walkways, right? Boy, you, you'd be well off. I okay. can retire. All right. Now this one here. Well, that's a scene. Uh, as you see, the horizon on that one isn't straight across. Everybody liked that one because usually when you see the horizon on the water or the horizon of the land, it's usually, you know, straight across. Well, I'm gonna tell you what I think of when I see that. I see a guy on a motorbike flying down <laughs> the, the uh, South Shore Road right. heading toward DV or something like that. <laughs> View of all that water out there. And this little um, uh, island here just kind of sticking off, slightly connected. Um, I forget the name of it, but that's going just before you get to DV. So it's like I see that guy on a motorcycle flying. Right? He just happened to have his, um, what do you call it now, the, the, the hero camera. Oh, yeah, the goat, <laughs> goat, goat, or the, or the goat, um, goat cam. Right, right, right. And I tried to put a reflection in his helmet, too, so uh, you can like, see the reflection of uh, right. see his now, helmet. Okay, all right, I didn't, I, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that, but now I do. So I, it is my motorcycle guy flying down the road. Okay, yeah, but um, I, I love the colors, love the colors. Okay. Now here, that's actually when I, I lived in California for a l little while. And like a, a lot of people, I do a lot of uh, car paintings. Mm -hmm. but I really don't paint cars, I paint the reflections in them. Like the older cars from the 50s and the 60s. That's where I get into these abstract reflections. You know, if you look into a car, I look at the car, but I also look at the reflections in the paint or in the chrome. And uh, all these little patterns, all these little abstract shapes create something real. So um, people say, you paint cars. I said, I really don't paint cars. I paint reflections in the cars. <laughs> and really, sometimes I get into these things because uh, they're more like challenges to me. It gets to a point where, I mean, I can paint things very easily, but it gets to a point where I want to challenge myself and my abilities to paint something that maybe nobody else is painting or nobody else wants to tackle or, you know, because I feel I can paint anything <laughs> because that's, that's the confidence I have. I can paint anything. So I try to pick the hardest thing to paint. I can paint anything too. <laughs> Just because I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Just not as good as you. <laughs> okay, so this is one with the arches too, but I, I was trying to focus on the light. Mm -hmm. Like the girl, I, I entitled this one uh, Walking Through the Light. Because really, you're focusing on that girl there. You see the arches and the steps and everything, but where you really look at it is that, that little part in the middle where the girl is walking through the light. And uh, that's what I was focusing on. Well, there's a natural attraction, I think, toward the animation, and when you're thinking animation, you're thinking people or something right. going on, and so it does grab you. But in the process, when you look, you can't miss all the texture and details and mm -hmm. the columns, the stairs, and everything else going right through there. And um, the the as someone, I guess this is home in that context. Is you're looking and saying, where is that? Is that someplace I know, or is it just someplace? But it looks so much like it would be someplace I know, in that sense. No need to know, it's just, it you get, evokes the right. feeling. Right. right, like you've been there before. Mm. All right, here we go. Well, this one, I'm just getting to the angles of all the, I, I call this one imperfect angles, because uh, there's nothing wrong with the architecture in St. Croix, but sometimes, Things aren't completely square, or people are sometimes in a lots in lots of ways. In lots of ways, yeah. But it all it all comes together. It can be because the ground settled, right? The ground, the ground was settled, and the art and the, the building was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it might be a, a different builder. You know, it gets right. repaired. Right. You know, it doesn't get repaired; it just gets patched up. But uh, <laughs> let, me, let, let me tell you. If we have a line here that Public Works says this is the road, you sure can find a house that's like this, <laughs> park in the road and park on the road. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a familiar uh, chorus theme when you're coming up there by, by Sonia's. And, uh, mm -hmm. Well, think, you know, your eye will catch all of that. 
and maybe a fellow artist's eye might catch on that. Mm -hmm. My untrained artistic eye, I look at it and I see the colors look like, hey, that looks like the real color. That looks like the four dish color red paint. Right. That has been slightly aged by time. It might have been more vivid when it was first put on, but it's mm -hmm. been there for a while. The yellow is still pretty, but it shows that, hey, it's got some sun on it. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, in that sense, what comes across to me is like, this looks like somebody that did a nice paint job and we come back several years and right. take a look at it and see the, the effects of the weather and the sun on it, but still true, true to form. And um, that that's what I see as, a, you know, I am, um, I, I'm reflecting on this more so in terms of the the gallery, uh, the top hat gallery Space. being right there in the walkway of people coming by, and I think that that is so great for Company Street because a lot of the buildings have been taken over by businesses that right. don't have any life during the day or transport uh, other than business. Right. Don't have any life after five o'clock. Right. Uh, you know other than the doors are closed and, and, and locked down. It does have a sign up. And a sign up, and it, now all of a sudden you have something that, that has a life either which way, during the work hours or during after hours, and for entertainment and appreciation. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. Uh, Art Thursday is, is always welcome mm -hmm. because it, it, it variety is a spice of life. It brings energy and to exactly. Right. And right. Of course, you also have things like uh, uh, the, the Jazz in the Park. Mm -hmm. okay. You have Sunset Jazz in, in Frederickstead. You, and, and usually I believe when they have that, that the museum is open. So you have these ways that they can have a symbiotic relationship. Oh, yeah. where, and you want to have a flow from here to there, back and forth, and the appreciation. So, yeah. That's now, reflections. Speaking of reflections. <laughs> well, you were talking <laughs> You were talking about earlier when you uh, take a picture of a car. Yeah. And this, all you see is the reflection. This is it. Well, that was actually a car show. Uh -huh. And uh, I ain't tell this one walking through because, as you see, there's a gentleman kind of walking through. But the whole side of the car is reflecting oh, yeah. everything. It's almost That's like a mirror. Going on. Yeah. It's almost like a mirror. But then you see the interior of the car and you realize. It's a car. Because <laughs> okay. if I didn't have a front, the top part of it, it would almost look like a mirror. Right. The thing it is, I try to encourage people to look for reflections in, uh, in their everyday activities because they're all over the place. We have a, a picture here of uh, one of the art shows here at, uh, that was held up at the kind of get a ballpark uh, facility up there. And yeah. that is a wonderful event in terms of bring into the greater public in one place and parking there's plenty of parking mm -hmm. the it's all weekend you see a, a variety of artists and their different styles and you get a chance to talk to the artists and they can tell you what their vision is sometimes you look at a picture you don't really know well, what's he trying to say here yeah and the, the one of the things that's happening in, in the Renaissance here on, on St. Croix in particular is that we're having more and more things to do. So sometimes you have to f figure out how you're going to fit in going to the show right. and the other things that you have to do. Because the, the, the last time I was there, we barely got there toward the end. Uh, and, and I was having family in town and showing them various was, things. Even well. this weekend, the that I was here, there was just so many things happening, I couldn't make it to everything. What do we have here? That's some more arches that I, uh, see sometimes the uh, artists get into a theme. So that's actually the same scene from the previous arch. The one where the, the, where the, the, where the, the girl, in the light. right. Yes. But this is like a more panoramic, uh, panoramic view of that same scene. Well, what, what I find is that I want to look at this and look for things right you know it jumps out at you is okay there's the light there are the different parts for the arches and everything 
and you just want to say, well, okay, what is it that I'm missing? There must be something else here. You're looking, but it's captivating in that sense. And right. You it's like you feel, you feel like you want to walk up those steps, and uh, it's an everyday scene. But those are scenes that we need to just uh, appreciate. Much. Now here we come into colors, powerful colors, flaming colors, sunlight in, embedded in a plant, embedded in a lush greenery background. Talk to me. Well, this is uh, a high biscuit, but it's more than a high biscuit. It's uh, like you described it with, with all those colors. <laughs> you, you described it. Oh, my goodness. I didn't, I didn't need to steal your, your yeah. under fire somewhere. I'm more than that. I mean, like, even in the flower, I mean, you say, oh, that's just a high biscuit. But if you really look, I mean, different varieties of high biscuits, I mean, uh, this is just one that had all those colors in it, and I just had to paint it. And just, you heard my expression of what I saw. <laughs> I can't, and, I can't and, say anything and else. I'm just saying that it's, it's just there before you, and if you just walk up to it and say, well, to some stranger, open your eyes for the first time, look at this, and tell me what you see, but you can't use the word flower. Right. And all of those things come out, it's, it's uh, not quite radiant because it's almost like it's it's a flame that's not giving off light, but it's still a flame. It's like a burst. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, we're here with Paul Youngblood, renowned artist, and looking at his art and doing my sense of interpretation to see how close I come to his interpretation. But, You're doing uh, a great job. Right now, we've got a, a piece in front of us here that... Um, when you first look at it, from my perspective, when you first look at it, it's a whole lot going on, and, and maybe for some people it might jump out at them what it is, all right? And for me, I saw all these different colors and patches, and as I look at it, then I start so seeing some things coming out. And then, is that a mouth? Is that an eye? What? No, <laughs> a fisherman <laughs> would have known what this is for the time he spotted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> for the time the fisherman spotted, he know what we're looking at here. Okay, but this is the untrained dog canton eye here, and um, I see your title for it here is feeding frenzy. So I'll let you give your description. Well, we've all seen uh, the koi fish. It's like a big carp. But usually when you see them, they're just swimming very slowly, very gracefully. But one time I had an opportunity to uh, see them when it's feeding time. And uh, when I saw that, it was like a frenzy. I mean, all these koi come and they're bubbling, the water's bubbling, you see mouths and fishes coming in all directions. and. Uh, and then I took a couple of photographs, because I work from photographs, because for me to paint something like that, I mean, I can only paint so fast <laughs> from a memory. But I say, so it took maybe about five different photographs to create this picture. But uh, it's, if you look at it at first, it looks like an abstract painting. Because all you see is colors and they're, blind, they're blending. But uh, that's how it looked when they were feeding. And uh, that's why I consider these pictures challenging, because, uh, to get the feeling, I mean, you can feel that there's some action going on there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's definitely some action going on there, mm -hmm. and uh, the colors are intertwined, the bubbles, and you can almost feel. Well, you say you have you have to do pictures of these things. I don't know why you have to do a picture. All you had to do was pay them to pose. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's like herding cats, right? Yeah, I don't man. think you would have been too successful. <laughs> but uh, I don't know how much money you had. Nah. You would be too successful <laughs> to pay them to pose. But I just like the colors, and uh, that's why even this is considered to me like an abstract reflection because the water is reflecting, the fish are reflecting, and it's, there, it's just a series of abstract patterns creating something that looks real. Okay, we have a special one here. We got a very <laughs> special one here. And, you know, Christmas, um, Christmas coming. Oh, and everybody going to be making the guava berries. <laughs> Whether it's with Cruzan or Diageo, 
we know that they're going to be making their guava berry. So anyhow, tell me a little bit about this, this painting and its history. Well, this is a painting I did for uh, a competition for Diageo Rome. This is when they first opened up on St. Croix. They wanted uh, an opening image, an opening poster. This is one of my surreal pieces. And surrealism is uh, when you use real images and use your imagination to create things that aren't real in the real world. So you see a bottle floating there. It's, the rum is coming out, but it's also, I want to picture like fresh rainwater dripping into the bottle to help create the rum. Mm -hmm. And you have the rum barrels at the bottom, because I want to encompass all the elements of, of making rum. Then when you look in the cloud, you see like an image of Captain Morgan. Then you see that schooner. And the schooner there in the cloud. And then you see the sugar mill over the there. Sugar mill on the right, yeah. And over here, there's some sugar cane coming out of the rum and coke. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got to see. <laughs> so I try to some powerful rum and coke. <laughs> so I try to encompass all of these elements into rum, and uh, it worked because I won the contest, and uh, they used it for the poster. Fantastic, fantastic. But when I first started painting, I did a lot of surrealism. I, w I would uh, one time I painted a picture of a fish. The front of the fish was like underwater. And the tail of the fish was on a plate, and all you saw were the bones. The front of the fish was like turned, and it looked like it was underwater, and then you get to the back, and it was on a plate, and it was just the, the tailbone. The, 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 the potential fate of every fish. <laughs> <laughs> so I was into surrealism a lot, because like I said before, Salvador Dali was one of my uh, in, in, inspirational artists when I was growing up. And when I came to St. Croix, you could see a lot of these uh, scenes are, uh, lend themselves to interpretations. Well, I see the, the, the theme of reflections is also very, very, very upfront here. Yeah. And, and the thing is, you can look at it one time and come back and, and look at it again, and it's something. like, you see something you missed. <laughs> Okay, this one here, I, I, I like this. So this time we move on from cars and we take it to, uh, to the sea almost. But right. To the sea outside the sea. <laughs> this is a dry dock sailboat over here in Gallows Bay Marine. It's actually reflecting Fort Louise Augusta condominiums. And there's a car kind of driving, two cars actually driving through, reflecting in the boat. Oh, right. See? I didn't see the cars. <laughs> I saw the wall and I saw the the uh, plants and then that caught my eye because uh, you know every time you go by there it's it's right there to be seen especially when the Bourbon Villa and you know, oh, yeah. flowers uh, yeah so even uh, it's like certain artists you know my theme is reflections so every time I look at something I see reflections even in flowers fish everything is reflecting something. And if it's not, I'm gonna put them in there anyway. <laughs> I see reflect. A lot of times, I see things that aren't actually there. You know, young blood reflection. <laughs> Your imagination tends to, to make something a reflection because when I paint, I paint layer on top of layer, almost like a silk screen. So uh, basically, I break it down to shapes and uh, colors. So. Uh, it lends itself to reflecting things. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that one here? Not, not common around here, thank you. Right? The alligator. The alligator. <laughs> well, that was, uh, I call that one abstract patterns because uh, I like the patterns in the, in the alligator. And, I was, and you can find something artistic in anything, even an alligator and the patterns there were really nice. Mm -hmm. It is uh, well, you know, it's armor. I, yeah. Um, Nature and nature, how everything kind of fits oh, yeah. into motion. So even though it moves, it fits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Serious reflection here. Are we on a motorcycle or what again? This was a gentleman. This was actually commissioned. He was a, a skier. Mm -hmm. So if you look at his nose there, but actually those are his uh, ski goggles. The ski goggles. Okay. All right. 
the slopey getting ready to challenge on. Wonderful contrast here from what's behind him and what's in front of him. And there again, I just use these patterns to create something that looks real. Then uh, this one that has one of my parrots. I have, uh, throughout the years, I've collected parrots. But right now, I have three of them. And uh, this one I don't have anymore because uh, actually this parrot was named Savannah because I bought him in Savannah, Georgia. And he was uh, one of my first parrots. And uh, he was trained very well. But one day I had him on my shoulder and I was going outside to check the mail. And Savannah flew off my shoulder and flew to the highest tree in the neighborhood. And I was in disbelief, you know, as much as nice as I treated this bird, he just flew away. But I guess freedom was more important to him. But with the flowers and the fauna and the colors, but I had to throw Savannah in there with his curiosity looking up at the flowers. But, uh, All right, now this here. That's Creaky Dam. And uh, throughout my history, I painted probably about uh, six or seven pictures of Creaky Dam, different angles, different. But this is one of my favorite shots of Creaky Dam because uh, to me, that's the heart of the rainforest there. And with the Spanish moss and the, the water and the big leaf vegetation. Actually, this is one of my favorite pieces that uh, people seem to love. Uh, just the feeling when it's hanging on the wall, it just brings serenity when you take a look at it. You know, reflections again. So this is a scene, actually this is reflecting the, the glass image. So really, basically you see, like, it's almost like you're looking through the window, but actually you're seeing a reflection of the other side of the street. Well, it just, it just looks like, it's really like you could just reach out and open and, the door and, right? and open the door and, and, and touch the wood and feel that nice green. All right. One of your favorites again? Well, the, actually, this is over in uh, Puerto Rico mm -hmm. at the uh, fort in Old San Juan. Yeah. Why do why you think I say it's one of your Arches. favorites? Arches. <laughs> That's right. Arches. <laughs> Arches. All right. right. Architecture, you know, that old architecture that uh, is captivating to me. Mm -hmm. And that's 99 steps in St. Thomas. St. Thomas, yeah, I, I, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Been up that one a couple of times. Okay. Because living in the Caribbean, you know, each island has its own uh, history, its own uh, personality. So I try to capture some of the favorite spots on each island. We've been having our conversation going on here. And one of the things that's clear to me is that somebody with 30 years worth of painting. You you look at your own work critically, I'm sure that you right? Oh yeah. And when you go back and you look at some of your works, let's say 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 15 years ago, and you look at your works now, what kind of thoughts go through your mind? Thoughts go through my mind like, uh, I don't believe I painted <laughs> Back then when I painted it, it I felt it was a masterpiece. But uh, I've never been one with a big ego or anything. But when you look back at, I mean, I painted hundreds of pictures. Sometimes I see a picture, I never, I forgot I painted that. But uh, the thing it is, you see the evolution of your work. And it's still evolving. But when I look back at 20, 30 years ago, I realized what I thought I knew then <laughs> was nothing. It was nothing compared to what I know now. But even though it was good back then, it's, you know, he just is like anything else. It's like a musician. He, if he looks back on his work or a writer or a dancer, well, you know, it's just, it's just growth. It's just growth because you continue to improve each picture I try to get better at. So um, if this is number 300 compared to number one, you can see the, the difference. All right, well, if you had any words of wisdom, whether it be to a 
young person that was looking at art as an area of education, pursuit, or career, or a person who just retired and is looking for some guidance in terms of they believe they have an interest in art. From any of perspective between the two, what would you? Well, for a young person, I would tell them not to do what I did. I would tell them to pursue education to the max. Because even if you have a PhD, you can still paint. I mean, you can always be an artist, but get as much education as you can along the way. Because that education, that's something you can fall back on. And uh, I would have preferred to be a professor <laughs> in painting than just being an artist, you know. Because uh, when, when you're young, you don't realize, I mean, you, you might be looking through, you know, the rose-colored glasses, you know. That might be. <laughs> yeah. You are. You are. <laughs> but you have to see the reality of the whole situation. Yeah. And when you're young, it's easier to continue something that you're doing than to stop and start doing your education again. It's possible a lot of people do it, but since you're already in the flow, keep going. Get your, uh, your bachelor's, your master's, your PhD. Continue doing that. Paint along the way, and while you're painting, don't let anybody change your style. Because lots of times you go to schools, and they want you to conform to whatever they're teaching. Just learn the techniques and continue with your style. Whatever is inside of you. Don't let them conform you to be a mold and just, you know, I came from this school, so I paint like this. No, you came from that school, you learned some technique, but you're still true to yourself. And just like if you're picking up art as a, as a hobby, as an older person, just do it to enjoy, to relax. You're not going to change the world. <laughs> you're not going to change the world. Just do it because you enjoy doing it. And if you can, make a little change on the side, that's fine. But don't put any pressure upon yourself. Just do it to enjoy it. And your enjoyment will come through your work and your work will sell if that's what you wanted to do, if, if there's joy in there. Yeah. Okay. The audience well, will see that. It's been very, very enlightening and, uh, and joyful experience. I am so glad that I caught you before you got on the plane and run all the way back up there to when would I ever see you back on the Oh, I'm sooner here. than you think. But okay. I, I appreciate the time that you gave me. Well, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And I look forward to being able to Continue this, this conversation. Continue this time. conversation another time, as well as share this part of the conversation with the with the rest of Saint Croix and the world. Of course, I don't have to worry about the chickens. The chickens, are, <laughs> they got front row seats. <laughs> they want to be part of it too. <laughs> All right. So, but it's definitely been a pleasure. So you know where I am. Okay. You got my number. I do. And for those who have had the opportunity to look at this. At any given point in time, just remember, Paul Youngblood Art.com. Artist. Artist.com. Artist. Yeah. Paul Youngblood Artist.com. And same thing on Facebook. The difference is that Paul Space, Youngblood Space, Artist, and it'll come right up. There you go. Okay. Definitely check him out. We have a world of talent here in the Virgin Islands, from the Virgin Islands, coming through the Virgin Islands, inspiring the world to come around the Virgin Islands. And so glad to see that you, with your roots here in St. Croix. Native son. All right, up there doing it. And uh, I really appreciate your words of wisdom. And depending on when you come back again, maybe we can make you one of those swing foods at one of the schools. Oh, that'd be my pleasure. Okay. Good Thank day. you. Okay. Thank you much.